Thank you to every one of the participants who have gathered here today for this wonderful webinar. Mr. Dula Prasad, why am I unable to? Yes. For this webinar on creativity and innovation, a masterclass, practical use cases and application areas to deliver breakthrough results. The funny part of it is, I wanted to name this masterclass as creativity, design thinking, and innovation. You know, as they say, man proposes and God disposes. But in this case, I proposed and Facebook disposed it. Disposes it because they said that we can't have such a big name. So I had to shorten the name. When given the option of what to do, I thought, okay, after much thinking, I decided I will do away with the design thinking part of it and just name it creativity and innovation. For the simple reason, I thought many people, for many people, design thinking is yet a new concept. So maybe, you know, they will see that design thinking and they might not come to the webinar. So I decided to do away with design thinking and the course became creativity and innovation. Just look at the irony of it. At this particular juncture, in the evolution of man and our earth, the most important thing is design thinking. Because the world is in the grip of a pandemic caused by an absolutely invisible guest, COVID-19. COVID-19 is invisible. And in my program, Creativity and Innovation, the most important thing which bridges creativity and innovation, which is design thinking, is invisible. But let me tell you one thing, every step of this program which you are going to experience today, yes, experience today is going to have a touch of design thinking in it. And I'm sure you will be able to understand it by the end of this program. Now, when I had to talk about this creativity and innovation, I had another major challenge in front of me, where do I begin? Where do I start talking about creativity, design thinking, and innovation? It's such an all-encompassing subject that I was in an absolute quandary as to where to begin. Then it struck me. Creativity is all about creation. So let us start with creation. The road of creation begins 4.6 billion years ago with the birth of our dear planet, Mother Earth. Three million years, billion years ago, life appeared on Earth. And it was only 360 million years ago that life which started in water came on to land. Around eight, five to eight million years ago, man, as we know, came on to Earth and it was only 200,000 years ago that Homo sapiens, of whom we belong, appeared. The story begins approximately 200,000 years ago with the appearance of Homo sapiens. And let me introduce you to the protagonist, the hero of the story of creativity and innovation, caveman number one and caveman number two. Why do they look so worried? And why is one of them scratching his head? What happened? What could have happened to them that they are so worried and scared? Friends, they had just escaped being crushed under a landslide. It was a narrow escape which brought them to this place and you see them standing here wondering how they escaped from the jaws of death. Caveman number two is exhorting caveman number one to go leave that place and go away because he doesn't want anything else to happen. But caveman number one seems to be lost deep in thought. He remembers seeing boulders and other you know, trees and jagged material rushing down the hillside in the avalanche. And one thing struck him at that time. The rounded objects were traveling much faster than the jagged objects. What did he observe? He observed that the rounded objects were traveling much faster than the jagged objects. 
the first mindset which showed creativity was born, the absorb mindset. After some time, Cayman number two is able to convince Cayman number one that it would be stupidity to continue standing there. So they start moving towards the camp. As they are moving, they see at a distance a couple of more cavemen standing on top of a cliff. Caveman number one immediately sees in his mind's eye what had happened that day morning. He was walking on the way with a pumpkin. The pumpkin slipped out of his hand, fell off the cliff and shattered a million pieces. And he also remembers that these people were talking last night about birds which are flying and they were discussing whether they can also fly. He immediately envisioned what would happen if these two people stupidly were to jump off the cliff and try to fly. The head looks very much like a pumpkin. It would go and hit the ground and be shattered into a million pieces. He runs to them, tries to explain to them that it would be foolhardy to try and jump off and flap their hands and fly. Because he has seen in his mind's eye what happens when a pumpkin falls on the ground and the head is also very much like a pumpkin. The second of the brain set necessary for creation was exhibited to the world, the envisioned brain set, mindset. <clears throat> After convincing these people, he takes them and starts moving towards the camp. The six of them, came in number one, came in number two, and these four came in. They start walking towards the camp. They are happily going when suddenly there is thunder and lightning and there is rain. They go and take shelter under a tree, under a big, gigantic tree. They take shelter. And what do they see? They see some distance away, there is another huge tree under which lots of animals are standing, taking shelter from the same rain, and there are lots of birds in that tree. They stand there worried whether these animals will attack us. We are not armed. We are just six of us. What to do? As they are worrying, there is a massive thunder and lightning which strikes that other tree, and the tree bursts into flames. They don't know what a flame is, but we know what must have happened then. It bursts into flame. There is huge light. There is a lot of warmth. And in that fire, the animals get roasted. The birds get roasted. They are seeing from here what is happening, but they can't understand. Because this is the first time they see fire. But they find that the warmth is very pleasant. And the smell coming out of the burning animals and birds it's very appetizing because those animals and birds are where they used to eat. As they are standing there, slowly the rain stops, the fire subsides, and these people start tentatively moving towards all those roasted animals and birds. They are hungry. They go near it. They taste it. They find it is very tasty. First time man had tasted food, roasted. They are very happy. Immediately, the caveman number one realizes that when the meat which they have been eating raw all these days is roasted in this new thing which has been made available to them, then it will taste very nice. He decides to take that fire along with him to the camp. He had made a beautiful connection. That food when roasted in fire will taste good. The third of the creative mindset had exposed itself, the connect mindset. He had connected that that lightning had created that fire. The fire had roasted the animals and the animals when roasted taste well. All the six of them had a sumptuous food and they still find that there is a lot more of the roasted animals and birds left out. They discuss among themselves and decide. No, we are not going to leave all this good food here. We will take it with us to the camp. So they take the food and start moving through the jungle towards their camp. As they are moving, the aroma of the roasted meat starts spreading in the air. 
very soon wild animals attack them. Wild animals attack them and two of them lose their life. The rest somehow escape with whatever bit of the roasted meat that they had in their hand there, they escape. Our man feels extremely sad. He sits down, thinks, why did it happen, have to happen today? Today only we came across this wonderful thing which can roast animals and make it into good food for us. And this happened. Then he connects that the same way as the lightning was the cause for the fire and the fire had roasted the meat, the aroma of the meat was the reason for the animals coming. The fourth of the creative mindset had surfaced in man, the reason mindset. He feels extremely sad having lost his two people. The sadness keeps on increasing. He realizes that somehow I have to get out of this sad state and move on. It will not work like this. How to explain to the world that when you take roasted meat and go out into the open, wild animals will attack you. I have to tell my other tribesmen. Otherwise, they will also get into this problem. They will also lose their life. He starts drawing. And the fifth of the mindset had been shown to the world, the transformed mindset. And as he drew, there was a catharsis of his feelings. The sadness kept on reducing. As he painted that misery for posterity, his sadness kept on reducing and he got into a highly celebrative mode, a flow where when the second caveman comes and tells him, he tells him, okay, hum a tune. Let me see whether I can play it. In this flow, the sixth of the mindset, all the things come together. He's, he's absorbing the fact that round objects move faster than jagged objects, that lightning can cause fire, fire can be used to roast animals, roasted animals take, taste well, they taste good, but if you expose it to the other animals, they will attack you. If they attack you, you might not be able to escape and you will lose your life. If you lose your life, you will feel sad. And the only way to get out of sadness is to express it and share it with others so that it will all go away. All these thoughts bring him to the place where all this originated, the landslide where he had seen round objects moving faster than jagged objects. He starts thinking, is it, will it not be possible for me to use those round objects or those fast moving objects to transport my food from one place to another so that, you know, without wild animals attacking me, I will be able to reach this food to my tribe's people. He decides to see whether he can do something. He takes a stone and starts chipping it. And he comes, with a, comes up with this shape. He starts looking at it. After much consideration, he decides that no, this has got jagged ends. And I saw that jagged materials, jagged objects move slower than round objects. My dear friend, the seventh and the most important and the final brain set for uh, creativity was born. The evaluate mindset gave rise to the wheel. Let me introduce you to the first mechanical object which was invented, the invention of the wheel. Now the question is, why is it that everything strikes only our friend came at number one? Where all came in that very intelligent at that time, or is it only caveman number one who is so creative? I don't know, because there is no record of the way caveman thought, excepting the paintings which are there in the caves. And they do not give any indication. But yes, I can definitely tell you what the situation is today. Let me see. 
if a person is creative and intelligent and he knows how to apply it what will be the outcome the outcome is visible in the fact that only 6% of the world's population that is approximately 42 million people have cornered 39.3% of the world's wealth that means 39.3% of the world's money riches is in the hands of only 0.6 people another 32.3% is in the hands of 4.4% of the people in other words 72% of the world's wealth is in the hands of just 5% of the people and balance 28% is in the hands of 95% in other words 95% of the world population is living hand to mouth which means translated into numbers only 5 out of 100 are creative and know how to use their brains sad isn't it god didn't want that he created all of us equal then why is it like this why is it that only 5% of the world population has been able to corner 72% of the world's wealth and the balance 95% are struggling with just 28% of the money trying to make two ends meet well going back to the stone age Paintings tell us that children, even at that stage of evolution, were very intelligent. You can see this child here. How intelligent he looks. And we all know that there is not a single child born of which his parents are not proud. Every parent goes to the roof and shouts from the rooftop that the child is a genius. Think of the level of creativity he exhibits. A 10-month-old can make you and me dance. He wraps us around his little finger and makes us do everything that he wants. As he grows, we find him use everything in the house to imagine and create so many wonderful things. You know, he makes rockets, he makes submarines, he does everything. But somewhere along the line, as shown in the paintings of the Stone Age, as we grow up, we become serious, depressed, worried, annoyed. We become a pain for the society and for ourselves. Here we see chairman number two asking chairman number one, first you invented the wheel, now you have invented the graphic novel. Are you not going to leave anything for us? Are you not going to leave anything for others? Came and number one uses his envision mindset and says, no, no, no. In the days to come, man will make bridges. Man will make musical instruments. Man will invent rockets, space travel, and man will make beautiful paintings. There is so much more yet to come. Oh, I think I got everyone worried because all these things are already done. Is it to mean that for us sitting here today during the, in the webinar, there is nothing to be done? No, gentlemen. The situation is not all that grim. And why it is not grim, we will see. What we are now seeing is the consumption economy, which is just the tip of the iceberg. What is visible to us all around us is only the consumption economy. The tip of the iceberg. It is a non-consumption economy where the real secret lies. And it is on the non-consumption economy that the consumption economy depends. The consumption economy depends upon sustaining an efficiency innovation to grow. But the real driver of the consumption economy is the market creating invention which is focused on the non-consumption economy, which drives the consumption economy. Every time a market creating innovation is designed by some creative genius, which could be you and me, anyone, the consumption economy expands and the ratio is always maintained. So we never need to worry. There will always be new products coming in. 
and building the consumption economy where we can all grow and prosper. Don't believe me, is it? Finding it difficult to believe that there is still so many things to come. Okay, let me ask a question. I would request some participants to unmute and tell me which is the world's largest consumer country today? Yes. Who is the largest consumer? Which country is the largest consumer today? India. Anyone, huh? West. India. 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 China, sir. United India. States. China, sir. China, sir. No. Who said India. United States? Who said United States? Achana, sir. Yes, Archana, you are absolutely right. It is United States of America, which is the largest consumer. But the surprising part about it is in the late 19th century and the earlier 20th century, you know, in the period of 1890 to about 1910, something like that, U.S. was also a struggling nation. It was a poor country. It was a developing nation. What is it which made United States what it is today? The world's most powerful country, the preferred destination of every inhabitant of Earth, and a consumer par excellence. What made it? Let's understand. Anyone recognize this person? And it was Henry one Ford. of the reasons. Henry Ford. Yes. Absolutely, Henry Ford. The man who said, think you can, think you can't, either way you will be right. It was sometime, you know, he started an automobile company and went from bank to bank with a begging bowl asking for money to finance his project. He was turned down. Turned down because they said, you do not have the financial might and the backing to be able to compete in the automobile market. At that time, there were eight other automobile companies in the US. Somewhere around 1906 to 1908, I don't know exactly when it was, he happened to visit a meat packaging factory where he saw a makeshift conveyor belt conveying meat to the various people who were packing it. He had a brilliant idea. He said, instead of my workers going to the components, can I make components come to them? And the assembly line was born. What was the outcome? There was a big boom in the Model T. Model T, which was, when it was introduced, it was costing $850. It came down gradually to $360 because of the various steps which followed this assembly line. And see what it did to America. You can see here the meat packaging company which he had gone to and what assembly line he created. And then this is what Ford Motors did. It enabled roads, schools, hotels, suburbs, restaurants, construction, tourism, oil, depending on name it. Because of that boom in the automobile sector, not a single thing was left out. It enabled every industry. It leveraged steel industry, for glass, rubber, paint, because all these items were required in the manufacture of a car. And it created jobs across the board, be it management, finance, distribution, sales, advertising. My dear friend, Ford had become a one-man army driving the growth of the United States, a country which had produced only 20,000 cars in 1909, had produced 2 million cars in 1922. That was the effect of an efficiency innovation, which was what this was. This was an efficiency innovation. As this was happening here, 
something else, as this was happening in Michigan, Detroit, something else was happening in New York. Let us see what was happening there. Recognize this person? He is the man, if anyone we need to recognize, we should recognize his face. He is the man who changed the course of history. Totally, he changed the course of history like no one else has. In all probability, no one else will ever. Unfortunate. He is one of those unsung heroes about whom people don't know much. Tell me, can you recognize him? Tesla. Hmm? Nicholas Tesla. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, if I am not... Uh, huh? Addition. Addition. Okay, anyone else? No one has contributed to the quality of life like this man has. No one. I can tell you this with absolute authority and you will agree with me when you know what he did. This man's name is, I will leave out his last name because you will catch it. I will not tell you the last name. His name is Valis Haviland. Billis Haviland, does it strike a chord? Billis Haviland completed his engineering from Cornell and joined Buffalo Forge in New York. A few buildings away from Buffalo Forge was one of their clients called Sackett and Williams who are lithographers and printers. They were New York's number one lithographer and printer. They had recently purchased a state-of-the-art printing machinery. But unfortunately, from the day it landed, that printing machinery was playing truant. There was huge amount of wastage of material in printing. Smudging was taking place. Alignment was not there. And, you know, they were continuously struggling to find out what was wrong. The machinery was perfect. There was absolutely nothing wrong with the machinery. Nobody could understand. Ultimately, out of absolute disgust, the management of Sackett and Williams sent an SOS to Buffalo Forge, who had an extremely powerful research and development department. They asked them, can you help us? They sent 25-year-old Willis Haviland to the factory. They said, son, go see what can be done. What is the problem? Now, this man had, even at that time, a design thinking mindset, even though he didn't know it was design thinking at that time. He landed up in uh, Socket and Williams and started, you know, systematically understanding what was happening. Three days down the line, he realized that the problem was not with the machinery. It was in top condition. It was absolutely okay. He decided that the people who were operating the machinery were top class craftsmen. There was no problem with them. He found out that the material which was being used for printing was of the highest quality. You could not find mistake with it. Then what is left out? Left, what is left out is the environment, the weather. So he understood that the problem was with the weather. He went around the plant and realized that the change in the temperature and humidity was what was creating all the problem in printing. But how do you handle mother nature? How do you handle humidity and temperature in a factory? He was at a loss. Third day night, he was not getting sleep. He was walking here and there. And then, you know, his legs took him all the way to Pittsburgh railway station. He started moving towards the railway station. Drowned in his own thoughts, thinking what to do, how to find a solution for this problem, how to control the humidity, how to control the temperature. Nothing was entering into his head. As he went, walked towards the railway station, he saw at the end of the site, in the platform, there was a steam engine standing. 
something about that steam engine attracted him. He started moving towards it. He got into the platform, started moving. From the deep recess of his subconscious, some thought, some inspiration seemed to be struggling to come out. He kept on moving towards that steam engine. The steam engine was enveloped in a fog. He started moving towards it. He entered into the fog and froze. Stood there for a few minutes. A big smile broke on his face. He had found out the answer to the problem which he was facing. He came back, started building the prototype of the first ever air conditioner built. Friends, just imagine, where would you and I be if on that night at Pittsburgh Railway Station, Willis Haviland Carrier had not understood, realized that you could pass air through a spray of water and create a fog. And by that, he can control both the humidity and the temperature. In 1902, at Saketh and William, the first air conditioning was air conditioning was installed. And the funny part of it is, you know what? For this brilliant invention of Willis, which was to change the course of history, can you imagine a single house today without an air conditioner? Can you imagine a single office without an air conditioner? Can you imagine a single commercial establishment? Without an air conditioner, cold chains, refrigerators, our entire life is controlled by air conditioners. The entire economy has changed. And for that, you know what he got? A measly promotion. In 1906, 2nd January, Willis Haviland Carrier patented this air conditioning in his name. And rest is history. Please mute, my dear friends. Don't disturb everyone. History is replete with such instances. You know, in 1973, it was Xerox company in their Palo Alto Research Center created the first graphic interface user, user interface. And the first computer with GUI by the name Xerox Alto was launched. On 1st of March, 1973, it bombed. They did not know how to handle it. It required a Steve Jobs to visit that center, see the graphic user interface, the mouse and all the other things. And he was blown apart. He came back, created Macintosh, rest is computer history. In the same way, it was Polaroid, it was Kodak, who first came up with the Polaroid camera. But Kodak management could not see beyond their nose and suppressed it and filed for bankruptcy. Because other companies came out with it, digital camera, and Kodak was wiped out. History is replete with such instances. Only because people did not know how to use the creativity and the innovation. In 1925, Rivoli Theater in New York became the first commercial establishment to install an air conditioner. Here you see that advertisement. In 1931, H.H. Schultz and Q. Sherman, they developed the first window unit air conditioner, which was priced at $10,000 to $50,000. But by 1953, one million air conditioners were sold per year. This is a market creating innovation. If an efficiency innovation by Gerald Ford, with Henry, by Henry Ford, drove America to become a consumer society and the richest country in the world, Henry Ford was one of the people responsible for it. Willis Haviland Carrier, single handed, had created a market creating innovation which is which is today a 124 billion industry in other words there are you know 
In the World Bank, there are around 260 odd countries whose GDP is being kept a track of. More than 200 of those countries are behind this one single innovation. One single. It's today a $124 billion market growing at the rate of compound annual growth rate of 9.9%. Can you imagine? Industrial to commercial to domestic. That brings us to the question. Is innovation a matter of inspiration and a flash of creativity? Is innovation a matter of inspiration and flash of creativity or can a person by design be innovative and build a business career and life? Can you by design be innovative? That is the most important question which we need to answer. And to get this answer, we need to go back to World War Number Two. When the American defense, they created this special research group. The special research group is a group which was created to answer the problems created by World War Number Two. We all know that Air Force, the air power, was one of the most defining powers in the World War Number Two. And the Axis forces were shooting down allied planes like mosquitoes. And the allied forces realized that unless they do something to stop this, they will not be able to survive the war and they will be ruined and the Axis forces will overrun Earth. So they created a special research group with five people. One of them was Leonard Jimmy, the person who is credited with giving us the decision theory. The second was Frederick Mosler, the man who is credited with creating the statistics department in the Harvard University. The third is Norbert Weiner, the man who gave cybernetics to the world. The fourth was Milton Friedman and Nobel Laureate. How much more intelligent do you require a group to be? The fifth was Abraham Wald, by far the most intelligent of the lot. He was a design thinker. He was a default design thinker. At that time, design thinking was not that in vogue. But the way he used to think was what is today understood as design thinking. Now, let us understand what had happened. The problem given to them was how to stop the Axis forces from shooting down the Allied planes. Just imagine. What a problem it is. One of the possible solutions was to armor the planes so that it will become bomb proof, bullet proof. Now, where do you armor the plane? When you look at the planes which are coming back, they were shot all over the place. There was absolutely no way they could understand how to do it because they faced two problems. Number one, if you armor the plane all over the places where it is shot, it will become very heavy and it will not take off at all. If you are selective in you know, armoring most of the places, then the plane will become slow and it will become a sitting duck for the axis gunners. So what could be done was a very small portion of the plane could be armored whereby if it can be prevented from being shot down, well and good, but then that does not solve the problem because the plane is being shot all over. Abraham Wald and others simply could not understand what to do. As they were thinking, Abraham Wald thought that I require fresh inspiration. So let me do one thing. Let me go and see the soldiers who have been shot, who are really the sufferers because of this. Because you see, the foot soldiers without air power to back them were getting shot all over the place. He went to the hospital. There he started sympathizing with the soldiers, visiting them. He saw the soldiers were shot in the hand, the legs, the stomach, the chest. All over the place they were shot. There were shots, you know, bullets had grazed their head, heads were bandaged. All over the place they were shot. He called a doctor. 
He asked him, what is this? I find that people are shot all over the place. He said, yes. They are shot all over the place. They said, is there any place where they have not been shot? I don't find them, you know, anyone here who has not been shot anywhere. That person said, yes, sir, there is one place where they have not been shot. He said, where is that? He said, they have not been shot in the forehead. He said, how do you say that? He said, because anyone who has been shot in the forehead has died on the battlefield itself. He has not come to the hospital. That was an aha moment for Abraham Ward. He rushed back to the SRG headquarters, got the other four members of the team, got the top brass of the military air force, came to the hospital and said, look at all these people. They all looked. They said, yes, Abraham, what are you trying to tell? He said, you look at them carefully. They looked at them carefully. And then he said, sir, do you realize that all the people who are alive and who have come back to this hospital are people who have not been shot in the forehead. Everywhere else where they have been shot, they have been injured, but they have come back. The dead one are those who have been shot in the forehead. Similarly, let us go and see where the plane has not been shot. That is the place where we have to armor it because if the bullet hits that, the plane goes down and it doesn't come back. My dear friends, we all know from history that World War II was won by the Allied forces. But what many of us don't know is the margin of victory was only 5%. 5% of the planes of Allied forces went down less than those of the Axis forces. And that 5% went down less because of armoring the engine area alone where the bullets were not there. You can say very conveniently that Abraham Wald won the war for the Allied forces without ever firing a bullet or stepping onto the battlefield. That is design thinking. Now let's see an official definition of design thinking. Design thinking refers to the cognitive, strategic, and practical processes by which design concepts are developed for the innovation of products and services within businesses and social contexts. I definitely look stupid trying to read it out to you, don't I? Very frankly speaking, I also did not understand a single word of what is written here. But this is what is written in the books. Now you know why design thinking is not understood by people. After reading this, I decided that I will understand design thinking in my own way. Let me explain to you what my way of understanding design thinking was. We all know this is a pot. Now, this pot of clay being worked on by the expertise of the potter, right? A pot is the result of clay being worked on by the expertise of a potter. The clay is the substantial cause. The clay is what is converted into a pot. The complementary clause Cause is the expertise of the potter. And when the substantial cause clay is acted upon by the complementary cause, the expertise of the potter, the effect is the pot. Please mute. Creativity is the substantial cause. Creativity is the clay. It is the raw material on which Design thinking, the complementary cause will work. When design thinking works on creativity, the result is innovation. This is what I understood. That means design thinking more than thinking is doing. More than thinking, design, you know, more than thinking, design thinking is doing. Now you will ask me, is it possible for you to learn design thinking 
Is it possible? You see, only 5% of the people in the world are creative. Is it possible for you to learn creativity? Well, creativity is a default setting. We have seen every child is creative. That means somewhere in the journey of our growing up into adults, our creativity has got suppressed. We have to reclaim it. We have to reclaim it and develop it. Once we reclaim and develop our creativity, we will become creative. Then once we understand the process called design thinking, we will be able to work on that creativity with the design thinking. And once we are able to apply our design thinking to our creativity, the outcome will be innovation in every aspect of our life, be it in our relationship with people, be it in our handling the everyday problems, be it in our office, or be it in creating a product for our customer, or be it in creating a product which is not yet seen the light of the day. Each and every one of these will become possible once we reclaim our creativity, understand the design thinking process and bring both of them together. The question is, can we do it? Recognize this person. Unmute and tell me, please. Please unmute and tell me. Who is it? Dr. Saravanan. Huh? Dr. Saravanan. Yes, who is this person? Christopher Reeve. Absolutely. This is Christopher Reeve. The man who made Superman famous, who made billions by acting in four Superman movies. This person was very passionate about writing. He had an accident in one of his practice and became totally paralyzed, neck down. But he did not give up. Doctors told him that he will never be, he will never recover. He is paralyzed for life. And that is the end of his life. But Christopher Reeve was made of much tougher stuff than what the doctors thought. He spent his entire money in ensuring that he recovered. And recover he did. Maybe not fully, but sufficiently to be able to open the Christopher Reeve Paralysis Foundation and to convince the world that paralysis can be overcome. He proved that paralysis can be overcome. And here is a news item from the Daily News where it says, Paralyzed Superman star told news of plans to launch a new film carrier. He came to the level of launching a new film carrier. That is the level to which he recovered. He convinced the U.S. government that people suffering from paralysis need not suffer if they are given the assistance required, they can recover and come to near normal life. And here you see Barack Obama signing a legislation called the American Paralysis Act. Listen to it. The legislation I'm signing today also makes progress on another front for which many Americans have long waited. And the Christopher and Dana Reeves Paralysis Act is the first piece of comprehensive legislation specifically aimed at addressing the challenges faced by Americans living with paralysis. The legislation I'm signing today also makes the legislation I'm signing today the question that we now need to ask is, do you really want to build your life? Very simple question. Do you really want to build your life? Is your family and personal growth your priority? If your answer is yes, then join the masterclass. Creativity and innovation, practical use cases and application areas to deliver breakthrough results. And what does this masterclass contain? The masterclass in creativity will start with an audit. Understanding your current creativity profile. How creative are you now? 
understanding where how and why your creative drive and ability got suppressed how it got suppressed you need to know that then only you will be able to retrace your back steps and reclaim it step by step road map to reclaiming your creative power absolutely applicable step by step map frames and biases which form your life you know vivekananda was once asked who are you tell introduce yourself he said don't ask who i am ask what my thoughts are thoughts make a man and thoughts are frames and biases you will learn strategies to reframe and how to overcome the biases of which you are a victim the seven creative brain sets as we have seen the absorb brain set the envision brain set the connect brain set the reason brain set the transform brain set the flow brain set and finally the evaluate brain set how to develop each one of them and integrate and balance them so that you can become a creative genius yes creative genius the creative process you will understand what is the creative process and finally how to integrate the creative process with your life my dear friends grand canvas require grand paintings <laughs> unless you think in the superlative you will not become the superlative and this is what this creative four days of creativity class will help you and what is the content of the innovation class understanding innovation beyond definition we have seen what definition of a design thinking does so we need to understand innovation beyond it why innovation is necessary in our life the different types of innovation which are there where to apply how to apply and you know where to focus your innovation one day you just cannot get up and say i am going to be innovative today even if you are feeling very creative and innovative where are you going to focus for it on the what circumstances where you need to focus what are the strategies to adopt what is the innovation model step by step model so that in the name of innovation you don't waste your time energy and money many people in the name of being creative and innovative spoil everything they waste money they waste time they waste energy no you should not do that and finally how to apply innovation in practice and then we come to design thinking understanding the design thinking again we have seen beyond the definition how to understand it what is a design thinking mindset how does design thinking action plan look how do you integrate both the design thinking mindset with the action plan how the brain behaves and functions you need to understand there are too many myths about the brain going around in the marketplace too many myths we need to come out of that myth and really understand the brain as per what the neuroscientists understand the psychological scientists understand the cognitive scientists understand the behavioral scientists understand we have to understand that adaptive opportunism and design thinking what is ethnography in design thinking visualization and implementation strategies elements of the design brief how to write a design brief how to audit it to see whether there are any weaknesses and loopholes in it and then the first step of the design process the discovery phase let us see the discovery phase a bit more in detail which we are going to be discussing during those four days of design thinking class questioning the driver in design thinking the second is persona what is a persona persona is creating a personality for your customer and understanding him do you realize this whole program began by my creating a persona in the form of two cavemen and driving the concept of creativity through them the next step of that was the empathy map i empathize with them 
and created the customer journey. They journeyed from the spot where the avalanche was to their camp. And in that journey, all the seven creative mindsets were explained. Then the customer experience. How do we create the customer experience pyramid and scale it step by step so that each step aha moment will ensure that your customer is retained by you? Getting a new customer costs seven times more than retaining a customer. Customer retention is very important in business. And then the context map. The context map, this design thinking class, this creativity, innovation, and design thinking is being presented to you in the context of COVID, which has created a wicked problem to the world. Because our entire historic data has been void. We cannot bring the past into the future because the new normal is entirely different. And we don't know how and when that will surface because the transition is going to be seamless and we don't know what the route is going to be. That is a wicked problem. So that is the context in which we are going to be learning creativity, innovation, and design thinking. Then the opportunity map. What are the opportunities which are there? How do you identify opportunities in your daily life? This is a discovery phase. That one single step of design thinking has all these aspects. Then we come to the second phase that define the ideation and the conceptualization, concept building phase. That means once you have discovered all these aspects, then you move on to the next phase, creating ideas and options. Decision is all about the number of options you have got, taking the best out of it. You take the best of the ideas and then build the concept. And then you come to, you understand the methodology, pitfall structure and implementation for a successful ideation. You just cannot sit down and say, no, I'm going to be doing a brainstorming. That is what most people do and waste time. There is no structure to the brainstorming which is done. So more often than not, everything goes to waste. I'm sure you are all aware of the Alibin, you know, concept paradox. That is, people in a brainstorming session will all agree on one particular point, and then when they are asked separately, all of them will say that no, no, I did not agree, but what to do? You know, I went with the majority. How do you ensure that ideation does not go to waste? What methodologies do you apply? What are the pitfalls you need to be careful about? What should be the structure and implementation of your methodology so that you will have successful ideation? Then you have the stimulus and assumptions in the call to action. What are the stimulus? What are the assumptions? What hypothesis do you need to test before you roll out the ideation process? And then you have got the concept development, design criteria, and the napkin pitch. These are, you know, napkin pitch is a tool by which you create a concept. And the third is hypothesis testing and rapid prototyping. You test the hypothesis that you have selected and create a prototype. The prototyping does not necessarily mean creating a you know, physical object. That is a wrong idea. There are various aspects of prototypes. You will be learning about that. What is the role of storytelling in prototype testing? The fourth phase is the evaluate phase. Once you evaluate, you come to customer co-creation along with the customer embracing him, you create what is the end output. And what is the methodology we are going to adopt? First, we are going to audit, we are going to understand what your current state of readiness to understand design thinking is. Based upon that, we will strategize to take you forward. Case study approach internalizing through elaborate explanations with examples and exercises. Third will be quiz to facilitate understanding co-creation with other participants so that you will get a good experience of what design thinking is all about. And finally, three months of one-on-one -on -one handholding to internalize the process and attain subject matter expertise status. What are the benefits, my dear friends? You will learn to balance and cogently develop a holistic 
creative mindset. A holistic and creative mindset is required under not just this circumstances, but at all times. How to reframe current limiting beliefs and attitudes and create a liberating value system. Learn to meet challenges creatively and enhance the quality of your life. Challenges are a way of life. If there were no challenges, you would be bored. Only those people who are six feet under the ground have no challenges. Everyone else has. And that's the way it should be. We should know how to face them and enjoy the process of facing them. You will understand in practical everyday life what is innovation and why it is necessary. Innovation at the four levels, the individual, the team, leadership and organization in the corporate context. You will internalize design thinking processes and create it as a default behavior. It will become your default behavior. You will think in terms of design thinking. Develop a structured approach to life and its challenges. And finally, learn how to create products, services, and experiences that will delight your customers. The creativity classes are from 19th February to 22nd February, evening 7 to 9.30, two and a half hours. Innovation classes will be from 26th February to 1st March, same 7 to 9.30 and design thinking from 5th to 8th March, 7 to 9.30. The same thing, or slightly modified, is being given by a premier institution. I don't want to take the name, but the name is somewhere here. And it is charging $3,500 for 12 weeks per week, three to five hours. And what are we charging? To register 500 rupees. If you want to do only one of these modules, either innovation or creativity or design thinking, it is 5,000 rupees. If you want to do two of the three modules, 9,000. But for all the three modules put together, it is 11,000. You will have to decide in the beginning. Pay 500 and register. Pay the balance on 16th of February. That is, you pay 500 now. If you want to do all the three, which is what ideally one should want to do, it will be 10,500 to be paid on 16th of February. What will you get for this? Three months of free consultation, one on one hand holding, so that you can learn these aspects, whatever we have discussed. Second, monthly get together of all the participants so that you can exchange thoughts with each other. You can exchange your experiences and learn from each other. Third is, you know, during my entire 43 years in the corporate, I've always been known as a checklist manager because I always used to work through checklists only. I will be giving you a checklist for all these things so that in the process, you will not miss out any step. The video recording of the modules will be given to you. If you join for all the three, the video recording of all the three modules will be given or the video recording of only that module for which you will register will be given to you so that you can refresh yourself at your own free time. A certificate will be given. Two advantages. Number one, if you are a business owner, this certificate will remind you not to go back to your old ways, but to practice the new. And if you are a professional, when you show this certificate to your interviewer, he will perforce be forced or directed to ask you a question on creativity, innovation, and design thinking, and you will floor him and get the job that you want. And finally, you know, the biggest advantage of work here, studying in an Ivy League university, a premier university, is the almanac. Why? Because it helps you network. The same networking with like-minded people will be available here. The cost is 155 US dollars or 210 Singapore dollars for those who are outside India. And for those who are in India, it is 11,000 rupees. 
for registration 500 rupees for the indian citizens and 10 us dollars for everyone else grab this opportunity to become creative and innovator and a design thinker take a stance in the context of this pandemic with the tools to help you on the way to designing an enviable life experience click on the pay you paypal link which mr mohan and mr durga prashad are putting in the chat box and register with 500 rupees or 10 dollars us or singapore dollars the balance can be paid on 16th of february thank you for your patience i am open for any question that you may have mr durga prashad mr mohan have you put the link in the chat box yeah i put pay you as well as the paper yeah both both thank you indians can pay by pay you register with 500 rupees and those who are from outside india can register with 10 dollars thank you my dear friends i'm open for questions you can unmute and ask any question that you want Yes, the prospectus will be sent to you. Your email, you can give us. Yes, sir. Um, uh, this is a very fantastic session. I'm staying outside of the country. Who, who and, is uh, speaking? Uh, my name is uh, Tanigayvel Dakshinamurthy. Uh, yes, Mr. Tanigayvel. Uh, yeah, so I, I work in a corporate and I stay outside the country now. Your timing could be a little challenging for me to attend it every day because my business call starts during that time. Uh, <laughs> is... do you, are you also planning to do some weekend sessions? I'm really interested in your... See, the, the program topics. is on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Four oh, okay. days. The four days are Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Okay. All right. Uh, All the four days, 19, 28, 21st, 22nd, happens to be on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And, you know, about the, the next week also, again, the same four days. The third week also, again, the same four days. But one thing I want to caution you, the program might get extended. Because, you see, mm -hmm. in case we find that the participants are finding it difficult to internalize it, I might extend the duration of the program for the same cost. Okay. Because my intention is you should understand it absolutely. Uh, all right, sir. I'll, I'll interact with you separately. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Uh, sir, what is the difference between creativity and innovation? This is Debanik. Yes. As I told you, creativity is the clay, is the thought process. The seven mindsets of absorb, how you absorb the information which is happening all around you. I think, Mr. Debanik, you must be aware that even 11 million bits of information enter the brain every second. But a person is aware of only 50 units of that information. Can you understand yes. the magnitude of what I'm telling? Yes, that's true. You can Google and find out. This 11 million units of information which mm. is going in is going directly into the subconscious. Mm. It is there, it is all stored. Mm. We are all born with a preloaded software. Are you aware of it? Uh, you mean the programming of the subconscious mind? Or do you mean no, genes? No. no. The preloaded software is the genetic memory with which every child is born. This genetic memory is of everything which has happened before it in the creation. And everything else, you know, when it comes into this world, the hardware which is there, it is totally blank, excepting the preload of software, the genetic memory, everything else is blank. The 11 million bits of information which goes in gets recorded, arranged in the forms of frames and biases. And the interaction between the free and the preloaded software and this is what you are. And you see, creativity is the thought process. Design thinking your thinking ability is the creativity. And you see, as you grow, this 3.3 to 3.5 pounds of brain, which uses 20% of your energy, you know, your brain is only 3.3 pounds. Are you aware of it? Correct. 
and the, you know the amount of energy it consumes 20% and allowed free rain it will consume all the energy that you have it's a, a, a you know it is a very greedy organ to ensure that it does not use too much of your energy nature has created things in such a way that as it grows shimatas are formed inside which leads to various behavioral patterns that is where the suppression of the creativity starts you have to reclaim that creativity then you have to apply what, what was that word what was that word with sh shimatas s c h e m a t a okay if you are really interested about it you can go and read a mm. book called thinking fast and slow by daniel kahneman the nobel prize winning mm. behavioral psycho economist of 2002 So that book is already in my backlog. <laughs> you have not yet read it. No, it's all I've downloaded. It. It's already in my backlog. I have to read it. Yes, it is. <laughs> and then the time has come. As they say, nothing happens without destiny beckoning you and telling you the time has come. Hmm. So, so uh, coming see, back to creativity your... and innovation, the difference. Innovation is the output okay. of design thinking, working on creativity. Hmm. You see this program which was designed. Hmm. How did you find it? Which program? This program which you just now. Ah, uh, okay. You, I am already on your list, so you sent me something on WhatsApp. I think the whole. Then I am asking, how did you like this program? What do you feel about this program? I really liked it. Why did you like it? well maybe because of the examples and the way you explained it that means the structure was slightly unique right yes that is what is called creativity mm. and the creativity when i applied design thinking to it the output is this innovative program the same program called creativity innovation and design thinking can be done in such a way that nobody would want to sit for even 5 minutes is that not possible of course that's that answers your question okay so so I'll, yeah i'll just mention two things before that was a very wonderful answer one is i've learned an additional thing from you today other than uh, the content that you're presenting and that is something on color coordination number one number 2 i'm sending you a private note uh, on linkedin about something i need your permission to do with you that will take 10 minutes i'm sending you a note on linkedin so you are making me the substantial cause and you want to do something and <laughs> create something fine go ahead you have the permission <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> yeah anyone else <clears throat> I enjoyed uh, viewing this program today, Arun sir. Who is it? Deepak Deepak Kalro. Ah, Deepak ji, namaskar. Yeah, yeah, Re really wonderful and quite thought provoking. Hmm. <laughs> really, really. <laughs> I'll come back. <laughs> thank you. It's thank really you. good. Really good of you. Uh, good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Hello, this is Lilian. From yes, Lilian. Tell me, Lilian. I find the course of wealth structure, the whole wealth of you know uh, information in your head, and really want to tap into that. But unfortunately, the timing is not right for me. So, are you going to have another session after the one? <laughs> Lilian, I am not in a position to. Please mute, please. There's a lot of noise, background noise coming in. Yeah, Lilian, I am not in a position to make any commitment about the future courses for the simple reason I live in the present. I don't know what tomorrow holds. No, okay. <laughs> Too bad for me. It's okay. It's okay, Lilian. I understand. You know, twelve days to commit to oneself is a bit difficult. I understand. Mm -hmm. There are various, uh, you know, people have their priorities. Yes. 
Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Tell me. Uh, I, I, I didn't know how to convert those rupees into uh, our currency or dollars. What is the rate for uh, people from Zambia? Okay, I will do one thing. Are you on WhatsApp? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, I will do one thing. Are you interested in joining the course? Yes, I am. You are in Lusaka? That's correct. Okay. I will get someone to get in touch with you. You can pay them in Kwacha. Oh, excellent. <laughs> that's, that's cool. No issue. You just get, send me your WhatsApp number. I have my friends in Lusaka. Those who have done my earlier courses, I will ask one of them. They will collect the money from you in Kwacha and they will have, uh, remit it to me. Don't worry about it. All right. Thank you. You can give me your name and, uh, you know, your WhatsApp number in the chat box. All right. What, what, what did you say your name is? Gilbert Banda. Okay. Mr. Gilbert? Yes, sir. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why didn't you say so earlier? <laughs> okay. I'll get one of my friends to, to get in touch with. No issue. All right. Yes. Anybody else has anything? Hello? No, the, the, there is there is some audio disturbance. Can't hear. Who is it? Absolutely nothing is audible. If there is no more questions, can we call it a day? Any questions? No, then we will call it off. There's no question in the chat box. Okay, then. Good night, friends. Thanks a lot for giving me your time. Good night, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night, sir. Wonderful section. Something very special, sir. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Great session. Thank you very much, sir. That's fantastic. <laughs> Great learning it was.
प्रसाद कैन यू हेयर मी मिस्टर दुर्गा प्रसाद uh mr nagareddy said this is mohan here i can hear you any any support required or any help required sir yeah i was going from this to transfer the amount i don't know what's uh, not going through what it is can i get it through the whatsapp uh we can definitely send this information through whatsapp as well so we will do that uh, certainly okay. by either late evening today or in the early morning tomorrow okay Uh, i am we are we are sure we have your numbers so in fact not yeah, only yeah. for you uh, for the people who have participated today we will certainly make sure that uh, the links for payment are sent by whatsapp as well thank you thank you monitor thank yeah. you thank you welcome mr nagreddy i'm have logging you. off okay yeah thank you